Tomorrow is Pokemon Day, and the big Pokemon presents, and a lot of people are waiting to see what is ultimately going to be revealed. Is it going to be a Pokemon Legends Arceus DLC? Is it going to be Generation 9? Is it going to be both? Let's dive in and talk Generation 9 of the Pokemon franchise. Yo, whoa, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka Drive. I'm bringing you guys a brand new video today, and today I'm going to break down all of the reasons why I think there is a very solid chance that we're getting a Generation 9 of Pokemon. Our team put together a ton of research and a ton of facts to bring you guys this video regarding the history of the Pokemon franchise and what we can look forward to and why I do believe that there is a very, very good chance, as I said, about getting Generation 9 this year. Be sure to hit that like button down below and of course, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new so you don't miss out on our epic Pokemon content. I'll be live streaming the announcement tomorrow morning on Sunday, Pokemon Day on twitch.tv slash adrive. So feel free to turn tune in and enjoy with the adrive army as we always have the craziest and fun watch parties. And of course, if you haven't done so yet, I got some brand new merch up on my merch store at teamshiny.com. You guys can pick up these sweet designs. We got a ton of different designs. So check them out. And if you use code Arceus, you get 15% off if you pick up three shirts or more. Without further ado, let's dive into the world of Pokemon. Let's talk about why I think we're getting generation nine and kind of everything in between this will lead us to that point. And actually, I'll tell you, I have a solid prediction on what region I think we're gonna have it based off of as well. So let's dive in. Okay, so obviously I'm gonna start this video by saying I'm not an insider. I don't know anything more than anyone else does. I'm just basing this off of my experience, kind of what I'm expecting, and we'll ultimately see what's gonna happen. But I really do feel like there's a, a big solid case for generation nine this year. So I'm gonna break down a few different points and then we're gonna dive into some of the things that might point towards what region or what the game might actually be based off of and some of the hints that we've seen in previous Pokemon games. So the first thing is when we look at the Pokemon franchise and Game Freak, we understand that their studio is broken into two different development teams. One team is working on the current game, in this case, Legends Arceus, and the other team is working on the game that otherwise would have just been released or would be releasing in the future. Now, you can make the argument of BDSP. However, BDSP was outsourced for the first time to another studio called Ilka, which also developed Pokemon Home. So we know that there's two teams, one of which is working on Arceus and then another team, which most certainly is working on the next title. So regardless whether or not Generation 9 comes out this year, they're working on a new title regardless. That, that's really what it comes down to. I don't think that that's really debatable at this point. So I do, I do believe that we are actually gonna get a Generation 9 release by end of year just on that fact alone. Then we look at kind of the, the release cycles of these games. Going back to generation five to six and beyond, we've had a three year release cycle for new generations every single time. Five to six was three years, six to seven, three years, seven, eight, three years. And now we are going to be three years in the fall from generation eight being released, uh, Sword and Shield of course, and it'll be potentially the time for them to release generation nine. There's a few other pieces to the puzzle here that really tie in. And I think it's important to recognize that Pokemon is much more than just a video game. They have an anime that they're they're kind of, you know, displaying. They have the TCG, they have competitive Pokemon. And all of these things are kind of looking like they're headed towards some sort of a conclusion or kind of a sunset and needing of some sort of new reboot or content. The TCG is already pivoting into their Legends Arceus sets and we know that there's a Pokemon Go special set coming out, but it seems as though with that all being done, it's perfect timing for them to kind of pivot into a new generation heading into the fall. The anime is in kind of a similar situation from my understanding. Admittedly, I don't follow it too much, but it seems as though kind of the journey's arc is concluding in a good spot that could lead us to a new generation and kind of new explorations for the team. And then competitive Pokemon, which I know pretty well, has been running on the same VGC circuit for years. And ultimately, I'll tell you, if, if they don't release a new generation or something new for competitive, competitive Pokemon is gonna be about as dead as it could ever be because there has been nothing fresh regarding competitive VGC or just the competitive circuit in general. The pandemic really messed that up as well, but ultimately there just really hasn't been a lot for that in terms of development. So when we look at those pillars that I break down, I do genuinely believe that they are going to release a new game. I, I really do. This is just my hunch that we are gonna get generation nine this fall. I still think we're getting Arceus DLC as well. I think we're actually gonna get both, but ultimately time will tell on those things. So let's kind of look at some of the history here, because I think that this is really cool to look at as when we kind of pick apart what this new generation could be, what the game could be based off of. As we know, various Pokemon generations and regions are based off of kind of real life regions. So the beginning of this is a bit of a stretch, 
but it makes a lot more sense as we work through it. So there's a theory that's gone on in the community that the mythical Pokemon actually hint at what the next game region is going to be. So again, it gets a little, it's a little foggy at the beginning, but it, it's very clear when you get to like generation four and beyond. Mew hinting at generation two due to the link between DNA and breeding. You look at Celebi being very focused on nature in generation two, potentially kind of hinting at the weather trio and kind of the conflict that takes place in Hoenn with Kyogre, Groudon, and Rayquaza. And now I think it's a little less of a stretch. You've got the mythical Pokemon of generation three, Jirachi and Deoxys being very much so focused around space and time, which is obviously the core theme in generation four with Palkia and Dialga. Generation 4 features Darkrai, which obviously becomes a big part of Generation 5's Dream World. And then Shaman, a Pokemon that's really representative of gratitude, uh, is a big theme around kind of the conflict that goes on between Team Plasma and N. When you look at Generation 5's mythicals and legendaries like Keldeo, Cabalion, Virizion, and Terrakion, those clearly represent the Three Musketeers, which are a reference to France. And obviously Generation 6 and Pokemon X and Y is based on France, and that's the Kalos region. We also think about Genesect, the mythical Pokemon, having this laser cannon on his back, which is very similar to kind of the ultimate weapon that Lysander uses as the peak of the conflict in Pokemon X and Y, as well as Liberty Gardens Victini in the Unova region. Uh, it could be a representation of Liberty Island, which is where the Statue of Liberty is located in the real world, which is obviously a shout out to New York, which is what Unova is based off of. But the Statue of Liberty was a gift from France to America. So the tie-in between what is New York and France between generation five and six is very strong. Generation six to seven, we look at the relationship between the Pokemon Carbank and the mythical Pokemon Deonsi. And then you look at Hoopa, which is a big one because obviously in Ultra Sun and Moon and Sun and Moon, there's a huge tie into these rings and these Ultra Beast portals and kind of the uh, traveling in space uh, as you kind of go through the rings uh, later on in the game in Ultra Sun and Moon as part of the post game. And then one of the more obvious ones is obviously Meltan and Melmetal, and it's ties to the UK's, UK based Galar region and the Industrial Revolution. I think Meltan and Melmetal is one of the biggest standouts here because it does not fit in the context of Alola and Sun and Moon Generation 7, but it obviously makes so much sense in Generation 8. So these mythical Pokemon almost bridge the gap. And it is possible, now that I'm kind of talking about it, that there are new mythical Pokemon introduced through Legends Arceus DLC, which I, I think we're getting Legends Arceus DLC as well. Um, but that's a big point. Ma Marshadow, another mythical from uh, the, that generation, could be a reference to shadow boxing or boxing, another theme or kind of sport, uh, very much so known in the UK and, and Britain. And then we look at the Generation 8 mythical, which there's only one, and it's Zarude. Zarude is an interesting mythical because it obviously has a signature move, Jungle Healing, which makes you immediately kind of think of rainforests and the Amazon. Uh, but it also makes you think of India as well, because the only type, uh, well, Zarude is actually based on a, a type of monkey called the Lion Tail Macaque and Gibbons. And uh, when you kind of look at the terrain of India and some of the inspiration there of what Zarude actually looks like, its design, its inspiration, it's very possible that Zarude is hinting towards an India-based region, and that's kind of what we're concluding here. Laventon, the professor in, in uh, Hisui, also mentions that he's from an India-based region, or he kind of hints at it, based on some of the Pokedex entries, which I find fascinating. If you guys haven't seen this, I find this amazing. Um, so when you look back, this is one of the coolest things, you may have stumbled on this, but when you look back on Pokemon Fire Red, Raichu's Pokedex entry states that its electrical charges can reach 100,000 volts, careless contact can cause even an Indian elephant to faint. And then in Legends Arceus, its, it's uh, text says, it can, char it can discharge bursts of electricity exceeding 100,000 volts. A single strike with any amount of power would inca uh, incapacitate one of the Kaparaja of my homeland. So he is saying that Kaparaja is from his homeland. Laventon is saying Kaparaja is from his homeland. Raichu's previous Pokedex entry says that it can uh, cause an Indian elephant to faint. Kaparaja is based on an Indian elephant. And in Pokemon Sword, it says they came along from another region. Kaparaja's dex. They came along from another region and worked together with humans. Their green skin is resistant to water. So all of these things are really pointing towards India. These, these couple pieces here. And you might say, oh, it's just kind of lore. And it could be. But I find it very interesting that, again, Lavinson says his home region. They talk about Kaparaja. They talk about the Indian elephant. Tying back to the Fire Red Dex entry. 
very very interesting and further we look at the pokemon kubfu and urshifu which are very very interesting they were introduced in the isle of armor they are said to be from a distant region that inhabits sheer cliffs and mountains and that is very representative of kind of an india-like region as well because when you think of what Sinnoh is yes Sinnoh does have a mountainous kind of focus in the center with mount coronet but it's not really like sheer cliffs that's not how you would describe it furthermore in the anime this is an interesting kind of tidbit regarding urshifu but urshifu has appeared in the anime through two different recurring characters both forms but kubfu apparently has not made its debut in the anime so perhaps there's some sort of tie-in like they did with lycanroc where there's a new form uh, i mean obviously it already has two forms Who who's to say that kubfu can't get another form if it actually is from a native region based on india so a lot of signs are pointing towards just that now we have a long history of pokemon hinting at various pokemon games through little things in the game itself and i'll kind of summarize some of that quickly but in the anime they showed ho-oh which was a gen 2 pokemon uh pacific log town uh based on the corsola colony was floating on top of that there's a bunch of stuff right i mean you guys probably know some of these things where you go back um i mean there's there's so many different things about the sundial and kalos and anastar city could have been hinting at sun and moon the new uh gen location of the islands of alola uh there's the anastar and the moon dials and there's so many things that that kind of take place one of the big ones there was a poster in ultra sun and moon of gigantamax toxtricity and one of the offices of game freak they talk about power spots uh they talk about rotom inhabiting devices and ask if rotom could inhabit a pc you obviously have the rotom pc and the rotom decks in sword and shield the only arceus plate you could find is the pixie plate which was not available in previous games and then in crown tundra every fossil was available except the gen 4 fossils which may have hinted that gen 4 remakes were coming um and then I, here's the thing listen i i think that the india based region is very likely but one of the other things that it could be based off of is italy and the reason why a lot of people are speculating italy is because there's a very detailed painting that seems to be of italy that's all over bdsp and when you meet masuda in game the first thing he says is ciao which is the italian word for hello Janichi masuda loves to hint at future pokemon games through this little lore and through these different ideas and things like that so i'm thinking it's probably india but i think that it would be unfair to make this video and not mention the potential references to italy as we look towards what generation 9 could actually look like and what it could be for the pokemon franchise <laughs> so there was a lot to pack into this video i gave you guys the breakdown on why i think generation 9 is coming just from the big wheel that is pokemon we talked about the mythicals hinting at the new game we talked about some of the different features and details that they kind of weave into the games uh, which i touched on briefly that may hint at what the next region is going to be so a lot to unpack but i hope you guys found this video interesting and informative if you did be sure to like the video down below and of course subscribe to the channel if you guys are new so you don't miss out on our epic pokemon content and i'm excited to stream the presents with you guys tomorrow and find out exactly what the future holds do i expect a full-blown generation 9 announcement probably not will we get logos maybe it's also possible that they just announced uh legends arceus dlc and don't announce anything for generation 9 and they announced generation 9 in a few months that's always possible as well and actually would align very much so with a lot of the things that they've done but nonetheless it's an exciting time to be a pokemon fan i'm most certainly stoked about it and i hope you guys are as well don't forget to pick up some team shiny swag at teamshiny.com and thank you guys so much for watching this one my name is dan i also go by a drop and i'll see you guys on the next one peace